Hey, my name is Matt Giordano, theyogimatt.com. Thank you for watching. Today I'm gonna to talk about a question that I get asked quite often, and that is, should I engage my buttocks when I'm in a backbend? A common cue that you might receive from yoga instructors is to relax your butt before going into something like full wheel or bridge pose. While I know it's coming from a really good place, let's go over the details of why relaxing your buttocks doesn't make sense and it doesn't actually work if you wanna get up into full wheel or bridge pose. In full wheel and in bridge pose, when the hips go up towards the sky, the action at the hip joint is called extension. It means the femur bone, the thigh bone, is going back behind the pelvis. Some of the most important muscles that create extension at the hip are the gluteus maximus, the deep external rotators of the buttocks, the hamstrings, and adductor magnus. That being said, if you relax your buttocks, you're probably relaxing most of the muscles that create hip extension. Therefore, lifting your hips off the ground is gonna be incredibly challenging with just your hamstrings and maybe your adductor magnus. Now that we've cleared that up, let's go over why you may have been given this cue. Since the gluteus maximus and the deep external rotators are extensors of the hips, but they're also external rotators of the thighs, what would happen is if you over-engage these muscles, the knees and thighs would turn out. To balance out that external rotation, you wanna turn on the internal rotators of the hip, which are outer gluteus muscles, the medius and minimus, your tensor fascia lata, which is also kind of on the outer hip, and your inner thigh muscles, your adductor muscles, all these muscles will help to balance out the external rotation that happens typically when you go into hip extension. While I don't recommend doing this unless you're fully warmed up, here's how I would cue a balanced action in the thighs for bridge pose and full wheel. Lying on your back, have your feet about outer hip width apart and your big toes more or less facing straight forward. Next, form an arch in your spine. So I tip the pelvis into anterior tilt and I pull the front ribs away from my pelvis to elongate my spine as much as possible. Then I try to keep this arch in my spine. I press down through the elbows and rise up. Now to rise up, I'm pressing straight down through the heels so my buttocks activates and my hips will lift as a result. Again, that's called extension at the hips. Now what I'm doing in order to keep the knees from splaying out to the sides is this is the very specific cue. I'm pressing my inner heels, the inner heels down, and that cues my legs to internally rotate so that I don't overly externally rotate my hips. Applying the same actions to full wheel as you did in bridge pose, feet outer hip width apart and big toes facing straight forward. And I form the arch of my spine. Once I have the arch in my spine, I keep it as I rise up. Now, to go to the next step, I take my hands outer shoulder width apart. I keep the arch in my spine. I press down through my heels even more to lift the hips up and I move some weight into the hands. Now at this point, again, you remind yourself the balanced action is to press the inner heels down into the ground and as a result, your hips will probably go up higher. To come down, I move my knees away from me, bend my elbows and move my hips to the ground in the same position I started in the arch position. As always, with any tips that you receive from any instructor, try these actions out. See how they feel in your body. Do you feel more powerful? Are you able to lift your hips up higher? Does it feel good? These are all great questions to ask yourself. I hope that this tip of pressing down through the inner heels has served you, and if you like it, please share it with others. And if you're a yoga instructor and this kind of information intrigues you, you'll be interested in my mentorship mastery program located on theyogimat.com slash mentorship. This is a one-on-one -on -one study between myself and you, and I help you develop the skills and tools necessary to get where you want to go with your teaching, with your practice, with your life. Again, thank you so much for watching. Visit theyogimat.com if you want to subscribe to the newsletter and get more of these videos. See you soon.